Hello, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to another art conversation with Farin, which is me. And um, our TD artist and NOVA member and college professor, it's Linda Putti. She's here with us to share her stories, her artwork, and her life. Welcome to our conversation, Linda. Thank you. How are you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. Getting sunny out, so that's a good thing. <laughs> All right, Linda. Um, let's start a conversation with asking you this question to introduce yourself. Tell us about yourself, your background, how you became an artist, how you start art. And um, yeah, a little bit about yourself, your work, and your artwork. Okay. I started out, I grew up in um, a typical Italian family. My grandfather was an immigrant, built a row of attached houses in Brooklyn, gave each one to a kid. So we grew up inside and out of each other, my relatives, aunts, uncles. Really 1950s, you'd knock on the wall, and Kay would stick a head out the window, you'd stick your head out, you would talk in and out of each other. Lots of people, lots of noise. Um, and I think the only way I found some sort of solace was in art. You know, I was the only one doing it and it was my special thing. So I grew up doing that. My father also, besides being um, a machinist and a mechanic, he used to make accordion bellows in the basement, you know, mm -hmm. from Italy. It would take a flat piece of cardboard, run it through a hand machine. You'd get it um, folded and then he would decorate it with beautiful uh, sateen and cut out decorations and he'd have glue this was in the basement he'd have glue boiling on the stove and I was fascinated from a little kid I watched him doing this and I said I want to do this you know I want to be an artist so um it was just my way of doing things and, and back I I was born in 51 so back in the early 60s um in my neighborhood if you wanted we went to college most of us and if you wanted to get out of the house you had to get married <laughs> there was no living <laughs> alone back then so my cousins and I all got married um and I started teaching when I got out of college in a prison in a state prison teaching men how to do art I had a whole art program that I was 21 years old these were big guys it, but they were great they were great and I was going to school for my MFA at night at Brooklyn College. And at Brooklyn College, you had Philip Pearlstein, William T. Williams, uh, J Max Ernst's son, Jimmy Ernst. You had all the, the big shots there. And I just wanted art. I inhaled art. That's all I wanted to do. And that's what I did. So in my 20s, I uh, was married and, and I, um, I did a lot of paintings concentrating on composition, which when we look at the slides, you'll see them. And um, I started off from there. And I have never stopped painting. I um, never wanted children. I could not conceive of being a painter and being a mother. I know everybody has shown me that it's quite possible, but it was not <laughs> me. And all I did was inhale paint for the last 50 years. So your artwork are your children. So that's basically it, right? Same right. thing. Every artist, every artist feel the same. They seem like you know my artwork are my children. Right. So I have kids, but still my artwork are my kids. So so precious to me. I could imagine your kids and your artwork. Wow. <laughs> so it's something possible, but you know. I know, it, I just did not have the capability or the desire to want to do both. Um, so first of all, I want to ask you, what type of art you know most with? That means what type of art you identify with before we go and see some of your artwork? For the last 20 years, I'm totally fascinated by light and color. The Impressionists, I am just crazy about them. I love that they were some of the first people to break all the rules and I'm fascinated by even momentary light and color. It makes me wild, makes me crazy. And I like challenging myself to get color, different color mixtures to get my feelings and sensations out on a piece of canvas, what I feel when I look at something. And that's you what I've been working with for the last 22 years. What type of medium? Is it oil or acrylic? I have worked, I work mainly in oils. I have worked uh, with oil on paper. 
crepe par and oil on paper, water media on paper. Um, I, there was a period, which you'll see, where I did um, paper, uh, wood, a lot of working uh, on painting on wood, but always painting. Um, I did do ceramics for a while. I taught ceramics for a while, but painting's my thing mainly with oils on canvas, especially the last 20 years. Yeah, and the subject are more landscape, right? Or yeah, lyr I call it lyrical landscape. It's nothing I stand in front of. I go and I'll take a walk and I get all these incredible feelings and I want to run to the studio and paint what I have in my head. I don't paint from photographs. I don't paint a la prima. It's all from my head. Okay, so you inspired by landscape, but it comes up yes. with your own idea and your own yes. expressions. Okay. Yes. And living on Staten Island, when I moved from Brooklyn to Staten Island, that's what turned me on to landscape because um, especially when I moved here at first in the eighties, not very developed. And we still surrounded by parks and water and beaches. It's, it's pretty amazing. I grew up in Brooklyn with one tree on the block and it would be green <laughs> and then it would be brown. And that was it. I had no idea of the nuances between green and brown. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. <laughs> All right, let's move on and see some of your beautiful okay. artwork and you can um, tell us a little bit about your um, work. All right. So this was a show at Snug Harbor Cultural Center is an amazing place. It was a place originally started for sailors who were weary and tired and, and retired. And they set up this incredible complex on Richmond Terrace in Staten Island. They also had another one in North Carolina. By the 60s, I believe, uh, there were fewer and fewer sailors. Remember, New York City was big with shipping and whatnot. There were tons. So they moved those sailors out and they established Snug Harbor Cultural Center as a, as a cultural center. And they started renovating buildings. They had to tear some down, but they started renovating them. And this is in a, in a gallery in Snug Harbor, the Newhouse Center for Contemporary Art, where they had a show of studio artists there are studios on the grounds, and I've had one since about 1984. So this was um, recent work. Uh, well, 2008, that's when I was doing, really getting into my lyrical landscape. This, that is oil on paper. The other two are oil on canvas and more recent. Um, the paper, I painted on paper for about eight years. It was really difficult to frame, really annoying. Mm -hmm. um, I like the lightweightness of it, but I wound up um, concentrating more on oils on canvas. So the middle one is oil on paper uh, attached to wood. The other two are canvas. Yeah, I'm wondering how they frame, like, you know, oil on paper. Difficult. Like, Difficult. Yeah. You have to um, glue it to foam board and then uh, the foam oh. to a wooden frame. Uh, some I have placed under plexiglass with regular frames. It, it's tough. So yeah. I went back to a canvas, which is, you know, easier. Yeah. I understand for framing. I'm just thinking because sometimes the same thing with watercolor, you know, watercolor and paper, that's also quite difficult. But for watercolor, you put glass over it. So it's, you know, make it easier. Yeah, watercolor, but with the oil, you don't want to put glass. Yeah, so I know. You yeah. Hear it somehow. And it's it was mm -hmm. really tough. Yeah, so. I understand. I understand. Okay, so here's very briefly, this is how I started out doing um, 1974 in my 20s when I was going for my MFA at night while I was working. I did people around me. These are my little um, nieces who are now grown with, with grandkids. <laughs> they would sit for me. I made everybody in my family sit for me. And um, I was having a tough time getting with my MFA. It was really difficult. And when one of the professors saw this, he said, she's got it. She's okay. And that spurred me on to continue uh, working at it. He he thought this is one of the most unique paintings of children he had ever seen. So from there, if you go to the next slide, I continued working with people and I used, I had to concentrate on competition, on the composition. So all of my pieces were indoors and I concentrated a lot on composition. I studied a lot of Cezanne and again, the impressionist, just trying to get the composition down, but my paintings were always dark. They were done in a more traditional way with the brown paint, not underpainting, but concentrating in brown paint. And again, yes. a lot of the places, um, uh, the, the homes were had dark interiors where I was living in my 20s in Brooklyn. It had dark interiors. Yeah, so, I understand. You're right. You know, I mean, back then, 
that was the fashion. Yes. You yeah. Know? Yeah. But that changed. Well, so this was pretty much through the 70s. I was married then to my first husband. And then if we go to the next. Back, I moved to Staten Island and I started going to Snug Harbor to paint. I discovered Snug Harbor and the guys at Maine, this, this is called the Great Library. Now it's all fixed up and decorated, but the maintenance men would allow me to carry my paints and big canvases in. And I started painting interior scenes as I had done in Brooklyn. But now I started looking out the grand windows. These are floor to ceiling windows. So I started doing that again in my dark colors. Um, and again, Snuck Harbor really wasn't officially open then, not in the 70s. Mm -hmm. But what happened in the next painting? Uh, look, just before we go to next, so the early subject of uh, your work were uh, mainly architecture, a structure, and people, right? Yes. And I would stand in front of them and paint. Nothing okay, was so. on my head. It was all okay. I set up. I carried my stuff all over the place. Yeah. All right. I, was, I was afraid. I didn't trust my intuition yet. You know, here I am. I, I graduated with my BA in 72. So now it's seven, six years. I took it so seriously. I did not trust myself to paint out of my head. I had to stand in front of everything. You know, it took yeah, me a long time that. to gain confidence. Even yeah, that, though that, that, that happened with experience. Oh, yes, that's what happened. Yeah, experience gave me the confidence, even though at about this time, the Brooklyn Museum had some shows and I did get in a couple of group shows there. So as yes. time went on and, and, and my personal life changed, I, I let, we got divorced. My husband, we were two kids. We didn't belong being married, really. I stayed in Staten Island and I started, I kept with the windows, but now my color palette changed. Now, was that because I was finally on my own? And much happier or what but my palette is still, these are still windows from snug harbor but notice they're not dark anymore they're filled with light and color and clouds and this was um in this year i was able to rent one of the studios in snug harbor which was great the studios are little bedrooms that the sailors slept in and they started converting them over for artists it was great for you know not very much rent and so i always think that life and painting go hand in hand. I think I was freer, happier, things changed, and you could see it in the painting. I'm sure as you yeah. see in your work, as your life goes on, you put it in to your work and it moves and changes. So yeah, definitely, you know, your inner feeling has impact on your brush <laughs> and yes. your thinking. And on your vision, what you're yeah. seeing. Yeah. You know, and I was um, living now there. There were tons of woods, tons of light, and I was really starting to get involved in it. So you could see the work gets lighter as I'm yeah. still looking out the window. Then, oops, I don't know why you jump one. That's okay. Then, you know, we're surrounded by water. It's a harbor. So um, my fascination of color and light began. And uh, the College of Staten Island at that time was a two-year college that was two blocks from the ferry. Mm -hmm. They allowed me, I guess I wormed my way into a lot of situations. The maintenance guys there allowed me to go into the college classrooms on weekends when there were no classes. And I painted this from the college classrooms, a whole series of paintings, looking at the water. You see the twin towers in the background, this was in mm -hmm. 1985. And I did a whole series now of concentrating just on water and sky, water and sky. So that's pretty much what I did through the mid eighties. And at the yeah. same time, I fortunately, someone introduced me to a most influential person in my life, a woman named Nancy Stein, who became my art agent. She had a yeah. gallery in Manhattan and she really loved my work. And I started doing works on paper, which she sold over the next 10 years all over the place. So. It had yeah, um, one of another thing which you see beside your color change, you see the subject of your work also change, yes. right? Yes. From solid structure to nature. Out. Yes. Just, I was at, you know, I had a backyard, we all did, where you would see pheasants walking around. They're gone now, but it was just loaded with all sorts of animals and birds. It was beautiful. Now, most of them are gone, pheasants are dead. They move. Yeah, I think they moved to my neighborhood now. Did my they? Neighborhood. Oh, you're lucky. 
Yeah, it's like zoo here. <laughs> so nice. Yeah, I miss that. Yeah. Oh, you don't miss that because whatever you plan, they're gonna come and eat it. So yeah, we Wait. stay around. So then I concentrated more on the waters and I started doing really big ones. These are, um, it's a diptych, um, 40 by 60. And I write well, here what, about what, my- uh, A question, why you start, yeah. why the size changed? Because you had more place or a studio to paint or it just something- Actually in the eighties, big paintings were pretty much fashionable. Okay. Yeah, they really were. And I did now have the studio and I just love, Actually, I was doing a lot of works that were 90 degrees, uh, 90 inches long. And mm -hmm. um, it was sort of the fashion and I loved it. I felt free. I could like dance. Now, by this time, I started working from my intuitions. This was like mid 80s. And I um, didn't have to stand in front of anything anymore. And this was from my imagination after I started trusting myself to work from uh, and I did this totally in the studio, but I would spend lots of time looking at the water. That's all I did was walk and look and walk and look. And it yeah. happened at about this time. So it got looser, a little more decorative. And these are from the same period. And um, they're 32 by 60. They fold out like a kind of religious uh, triptych where it's flat and yeah. then they fold out like that. And I was just totally immersed in. The water. Now I put where they went to because I would like people to see that just because you do something 30 years ago does not mean you should dismiss it. This last one um, up there recently donated to Hudson Community College 2021 and I did that in the 80s. Yeah. So you know your work is valuable no matter what time you do it. So to hold on to it don't toss it out because it's old because other people like it and and it's good it's just older you know so that's why i put that down but the corporations they liked big pieces people liked big pieces back then yeah. and i don't know uh, I, I think new york city was having like a renaissance with lots of money all over the place so um I had uh, you know i mean it's age often bring more value so age is not that's something true you yeah. know, use the value of an art piece. It brings more value. The so art piece is one of those, which is by age getting more valuable. And That's true. Yeah. That's true. I, I tend to, I, I didn't believe that until these things started happening. New York City, oh, was just, um, there was just money all over. I was still working at the prison during the day. At night, I was adjuncting in the colleges. And I would have my supervisor walk through the halls of the prison saying, you know, anybody who wants to teach here, we got more money. We can open another classroom. There was just money flowing. And it yeah. was really, I just happened to hit a good wave in the 80s. You know, it sort of disappeared in the 90s. That was the end of it. And I don't think ever really recovered. But, um, you know, timing is another thing. Yeah, Where exactly. are you at a certain time? And who do you know? It's all who you know. That's another thing, too. Yeah, you Anyways. have to be in the right place, right time. Got it. You know? <laughs> That's right. And um, at this point, then, we um, we bought my, I was married then, and my husband and I bought a little house. My brother lived in East Hampton. He was a realtor. Thank you, Jesus. He was really good. And he found a little house for us in the Springs in East Hampton, and we moved there um, part-time weekends. We spent summers there. And that changed my life. There were so many artists there. Um, we, you could walk to the Bay Beach, the water, the beaches, unbelievably fascinating in the 90s. And we didn't have a ton of money, but that's okay. You can afford to have a small house there and still be here and meet a ton of artists. And we, we stayed there for like, and, and the water just like ate me up. So I was doing um, these, again, more water paintings from my imagination. This was on the cover of a magazine out there. Um, everybody was very supportive of the artists. There were lots of smaller galleries where people were very supportive. You didn't have to be a big shot. It's different now. Now it's all super, super high end. Um, and a lot of us artists sort of like drifted away because it just, it became, um, uh, what's the word, urbanized? Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, and it just totally. Worry. 
very and a lot high, of us. high end neighborhood. In, yeah, you know. totally high end. And it wasn't back then. It was it was for moderate. And, and again, people supported the local artists and there were tons of galleries. So yeah. that's when I was really doing a lot of my um, I would sit at the beach all day and go home and just paint, paint, paint. So continuing in this looser and because it felt so spiritual being out there, I started making on a lot of the shows I were in, I was in wanted small pieces. So I started cutting up like little church like images of wood and doing my waves on there and, and the nights were beautiful the one on uh, the blue one and the gold one is like what the nights were like it was gorgeous out there the stars were everywhere and I just felt very spiritual being out there and up on the next slide you'll see um, and I see like you add now gold leaf into your piece. yes I was playing around with gold leaf on the wood and oils and crepar and um wow so you know again life and art so there was my little house in the woods I loved my little house it was a tiny little house surrounded by all the green and it was like a chapel in the woods for me. It was, it was very, very special. And that's when I moved from water imagery to tree imagery because I was surrounded constantly by tons of trees. I couldn't believe wow. it. Yeah. And so that started moving the little sun coming through the trees in my little holy little house. Well, yeah, I saw it as we have good imaginations, don't we? <laughs> yeah, I know. I mean, that's, if you have good imagination and you are in the right place, Voila, you know, you can do whatever you want. You are an That's artist. You are right, we're so creator. lucky. Yeah, you my, old, my friend had said to me, she's blessed because she's an artist, because she sees yeah. things that other people don't see. Don't see, you exactly. Know? We yeah. are in a sense, God, right? And God and goddesses, which is we create. Yeah. I don't want tell to, my husband well, that I'm a goddess. We'll see if yeah. he buys <laughs> You are a goddess as you're creating. So artists are gods, so divine, you know, we are divine. So let's see that. And so, so this is this is again three panel. This one the uh, but they're house. tiny. These are like um 16 by 20, they're very small. So this was in the 90s. I was doing these images moving into the tree imagery, but they were very small. Mm -hmm. It's very small. So, and then uh, the tree, tree panel hanging on a wall or standing? I, I okay. didn't get it. Yeah, you can't see it. I'm sorry. It's on a wooden, a piece of black wood. Oh, okay. And okay, that's, uh, yeah, it, they're, on, they're small on pieces of wood. All right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, this is where you start trees. Sorry. I don't know. For some reason, um, the PowerPoint jump one ahead. That's okay. Actually, if you go back, can you jump it back a minute? Yes. These, uh, this woman, Nancy, who was uh, Nancy Stein, who I'm still friends with, um, I had people from, oh gosh, a, a couple of years ago, people from St. Patrick's Cathedral came to my studio and they, I donated a few of these little pieces. They felt they were very holy and spiritual. So they're in the um, patron's dining room at St. Patrick's Cathedral. Me, me and Leonardo da Vinci. <laughs> All right, a little bit of a difference there. <laughs> yeah, okay. That, that not, much, oh, uh, not much. Yeah, not much. But um, uh, yeah, because they had that spiritual feel to it. But I'm, I'm going to move away from the spirit as, as, as new time comes up. But they, they were, um, yeah, then I, I caught into the trees and I got into bigger trees. Now I'm doing... Oil. Now I start back with the oil again, the oil on canvas, the oil on paper in the 2000s. And it was just trees. It was like eating tree, trees. Yes. Yeah. And just because you were surrounded by trees instead yes. of water. Yes. And yeah. it makes just sense, trees. right? Yeah. And then um, um, just again, more of the tree imagery, um, autumn imagery and traveling here and there, oil on every paper. And also, I know these are oil on paper, but I also was working with the oil on campus at the time. And I was getting looser and looser and a little more abstract, as you can see. Yeah. And, and now I consider these my more recent works. These are works, what, uh, from the last seven, 10 years or so. They're all oil on canvas. They're all inspired. We sold the house, um, we sold the house in 2013. See, this is 15 because it just got to be too high end out there, too hard for us to keep traveling. The traffic 
used to take us two hours is now four hours and we bought a house in staten island i couldn't handle two houses it was too much it's just traffic it's crazy in oh man it was nuts yeah and again i'm still teaching at night and teaching during the day it was crazy i couldn't do it so now these are all concentrated more from um walks in 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 staten island and and upstate and and it's totally uh tree imagery very lyrical uh oils on campus and this is pretty much what i've been doing for the last few years except and it became more abstract your work they're getting more abstract yeah they are i just yeah. love and i'm sure with your work too how you see your life totally intertwines with your art i, I started working with clouds clouds now all i do is clouds the last four years and this cloud piece um there was an uh a juried exhibition in staten island in their museum they renovated this beautiful beaux-arts building into a museum and they had a competition and this piece got into it and this is on it's it was opened in may and it'll be on till march of 2023 so the point of the exhibit was how did staten island influence you and i wrote to them it changed my life it opened me up okay. to nature and lyrical imagery it totally changed my life and so this was included in the show and it's a very nice show they have videos in the show um how people and not everyone's from staten island in the show people who lived in brooklyn took the ferry over a lot and they talked about their experiences being on the ferry so it's an interesting show they uh, they varied it a lot with the video and photographs and paintings so this one yeah. was done in 2019 these are very recent i just finished these two and these and this one is in the nawa exhibit yeah uh, that's up now right i haven't and, i haven't um, get a chance to go and see the exhibition yet are, well you're in the exhibit are you not yes i am i am yes but so i just you, did my work but i haven't get a chance to go yet oh because you're very busy as well you're super yeah. busy yeah i'm going to present now too so that thursday which is the oh opening. that's right we were talking about that's fantastic they're great students right because they have nothing to really do really <laughs> eager you know really eager to learn in you know they're looking for a second chance so that's, that's, it's just yeah. great i i love teaching in the prison i just loved it i um i stopped teaching there in um about 15 20 years ago and i just did the adjuncting in the college I taught at a lot of different colleges. Now I'm I'm just at St. John's. Um yeah, but beautiful. And so, so uh it. yeah, so I also want to um show your website. Linda has a beautiful website with a lot of her work in there. So if anyone is interested, they can go and see more of your work, your current work and then which is the way you divide it. I really happy and easy <laughs> to also navigate because you put your older in different um, section and your current work here. Really easy to navigate. Oh, thank you so much. Um, my husband is a little computer nerd. He's very good at it. He, he did this for me. He was very good uh, with doing it. Yeah. I, yeah. So that's that's a good thing, you know, to have somebody help you. Yeah, because really I, good. Um, I get lost a lot. <laughs> yeah. And, and I, of, you know, everybody, computer is something change every minute, you know. It really did. It really did. Now, do you do Zoom classes with your classes? Yes. Sometimes? Yeah. My School of Visual Art classes are online, but from wow. next next semester, I'm in person because I'm teaching foundation courses. So, oh, that's wonderful. Uh, and next year, all my classes in person just because I miss teaching in person. I like it. Yeah, you need that students. feedback. Yeah. Yeah. And then so it's just online is not for me. Been two years, but that's it. So, uh, Linda, do you have any last word for our um, guest today? I don't know. Just keep painting, keep painting, keep painting, and then you wind up with a whole bunch of them, and you don't know what you do when you die. <laughs> you know, I told everybody, dig my grave twelve feet deep, fill the first six with the artwork, then you can throw me in. I don't know. You just got to do it. It's a way of life. And your yeah, personal life influences everything. It's just who you are, and there's no choice. You know, there's and no the, choice. Yeah, and the subject all are around us, within us. You know, uh, what we need to do, we look to, we need to just look out and in, and we find the subject. That's, That's our inspiration. And it's constant. I feel like we have very, very busy minds. That it's exactly. constantly absorbing, constantly putting out. Um, and as someone said, 
it's not a way of life for everyone. But if it's okay. your way of life, you have no choice but to do it. No choice whatsoever. And it gives you so, joy. So, yeah. And don't forget, you are divine. We artists are, are divine and we are God and goddesses. So we have to keep creating. Okay. I will yeah. try to keep the goddess part in mind. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you, Linda. Thank you, Thank very, you so much. very much. And, um, keep working and keep doing what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank Great you. Bye-bye.